Welcome back to CrownedEdies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series in defense of philosophy. In this video we'll be looking at philosophy's not dead. It's surely alive. Now, another line of criticism frequently leveled by the academic critics of philosophy, most notably Stephen Hawking, is that philosophy is dead. They maybe admit that perhaps it was useful in the past, but it has no modern applications. Generally, this is a view championed by scientists who claim that philosophy has lost all of its importance, that science now fills the roles that philosophy used to. This is especially convincing if you read a lot of ancient natural philosophy, the precursor to science, which science has effectively replaced. In the last video, we discussed a number of things that science cannot do but philosophy can, such as ethics, interdisciplinary communication, and so on. In this video, we're going to look at how science, in fact, requires philosophy to work, and some of the reasons why someone like Stephen Hawking or other physicists actually have some reasons to try to undermine philosophy completely separate from philosophy actually having a basis in reality or an importance in our discussion, particularly why they have reason to try to undermine the philosophy of science. First, let's acknowledge that there are many areas of philosophy which other disciplines have replaced. Natural philosophy was science before the scientific method was developed. Some parts of philosophy of mind have become psychology. Some areas of political philosophy have become their own discipline of political science. Various areas of art have taken on the task not just of creating art, but of cataloging and critiquing it as well, cutting into the turf of the philosophy of art. But that doesn't mean that any of these disciplines have really fully replaced philosophy. Psychology doesn't attempt to answer questions about whether computers are conscious or whether computers could in principle be conscious. Political science doesn't try to answer questions of which political system is actually right or just, or if it does, it's more in the realm of philosophy than political science strictly, and there are some blurred lines between those two disciplines. And art doesn't really attempt to define beautiful or define art so much as it tries to just create art. But once again, there may be some blurred lines. But a place where there is a clear distinction and a clear line is between philosophy of science and science. Science assumes that the scientific method is justified along with its conclusions, and it works up from there, using that method to draw conclusions which that method permits it to. Philosophy of science, on the other hand, is what created and underpins those methods. Without the arguments of philosophy of science, there's no reason for us to be at all convinced by the conclusions of science, especially in the face of serious problems for the scientific method, such as the problem of underdetermination, the problem of induction, and so on. The list goes on. If we abandon philosophy, we no longer have any reason to believe that the claims of science are true in the face of claims of an evil deceiver, or being a brain in the bat, or all of these other problems that science has no tools to deal with because there is inherently no empirical way to fight them. Why then, if philosophy is so necessary to the project of science, do scientists deride philosophy as a discipline? Because it's also the job of philosophy to highlight and enforce the restrictions of the scientific method. This brings us to an important problem in the philosophy of science, the problem of demarcation. Basically, what makes one thing science and another not? Why do we accept astronomy as science, for example, but not accept astrology as science? The most common answer these days is given by Karl Popper, one of the greatest philosophers of science of the last century, who claims that the key is falsification. If a theory can be shown to be false through experiment, then it's scientific. If not, it's merely pseudoscience. Basically, if you're making a claim that no one could ever show that it's false, you're not actually doing science. And here's where these physicists come in. Stephen Hawking, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and other theoretical physicists want to discredit philosophy particularly because they have posited theories which cannot be falsified, but want to claim that they're still doing science. It is the job of philosophy to tell science when its methods have veered into pseudoscience, and in these cases, philosophers have gone after these theories of physics. Instead of actually doing science, these academics have decided to delegitimize the judge in the hopes of muddying the waters and casting this battle 
as one between science and philosophy instead of just what it is, and attempts to make their pseudoscience widely accepted. It is no different from a politician attacking scientists in general when faced with scientific results which disagree with their policy decisions. It's not a coincidence that Hawking made these comments when he was defending a theory which could never be tested, at least without a particle accelerator the size of the Milky Way. But he explained, expected his audience to take it for no scientific reason but to take it on faith, simply because of his prowess or his kind of respect for him and respect for the discipline of science and his ability to call it science. It's the job of philosophy of science to say, you have stopped doing science. You are doing pseudoscience. You are doing the same thing that people are doing with crystal balls when they're telling fortunes. You've stepped beyond what we can call science because what you're talking about is no longer empirically falsifiable. There's nothing that anyone could ever do in terms of an experiment, at least in a practical way, which could prove you wrong. So you're not really doing science. That was Philosophy's Not Dead. It's surely alive. Next up, we're going to take a look at Philosophy Makes progress, and then finally, philosophy is not racist. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.